Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with textile and quilt designer Thomas Knauer. Thomas, welcome to our set. Thank you. It's good to be. You are not um, a stranger to Quilter's Newsletter because you do write a column for us, but this is our first time having you here in our studio to demonstrate a technique, and we're really excited. So, so am I. Good. <laughs> um, so let's talk, what block are we doing today? So today we're going to do the X block from uh, You Are Here Quilt, um, and we're going to go through the sub blocks to make that block, and then we'll go and see how that block develop, or is integrated in to create the overall effect. Very good. All right. So let's get started. So I'm, we're going to start with already having made my large half, half square triangle for the sub block. You would cut your squares to 10 and 7 eighths. Okay. Um, so everything will size down so it to would correctly. Finish. If we were stopping here, it would finish at 10 inches. Right. But this is not going to be the finished product. No, because we're going to have a trim and that's a little a trick to okay. get a typographically valid X. Typographically valid. Yes. That's not a term we've heard on the show so far. <laughs> well, um, how do you do make your half square triangles? Do you put two squares together and then stitch on either side of a middle line? I, I do the do two squares and I draw both lines okay. and then sew on okay. those because I, whenever I can give myself a simple line to follow, and I'll use my uh, embroidery foot so I can see that line really oh. well and have the little red dot or the little red line on mm -hmm. my plastic embroidery foot that helps me keep truly on that line. Okay. Um, and one other tip for these, um, I find for larger than say six inch half square triangles, there's a tendency to get a stretch. Yeah. So I will often starch. Sure. Um, just to keep my unstable material yeah. stable. Yeah. Um, so we'll start with that half, large half square triangle already made, and we'll take a five and a quarter inch square and lay it into one corner. Okay. Again, I've drawn my line. I will often use a little bit of a glue stick okay. just to hold this down and make it neat just so it's not going to drag and try to pull them up as much. You know, as the mother of small children, I have glue sticks and I just, I don't use them as much as I probably should. I will try I that I use next time. starch and glue and anything to make mm -hmm. fabric more stable mm -hmm. um, whenever I can because I can do it without, but whatever I can do to make it right. easier um, and less likely to make a mistake, I'm going to do it. All right. So you don't pin? I don't pin. Okay. Um, I don't know why. I think I have a but pin you... phobia. Well, I've, now that I've used the do you glue need to stick, talk about it? perhaps. <laughs> um, now that I've used the glue stick, you know, that's right. really doing what the pin would, and I'm not then putting little holes in. And I drop my foot. So with this, you're stitching directly on the line that you drew. Directly on the, on the line, because this is not then cutting it in two mm -hmm. like you would the half square triangle. We're just going to trim the this leftover. This is a stitch and flip technique yes. is the, at least the terminology we use. So I'll nicely sew through right on my line. I'm not watching the needle. I'm watching the red line on my embroidery foot to try to keep it there. And we were talking before we started about speed. I am not a fast sewer, um, especially when following a line. I like to just, if you start veering off and you're going really fast, right. it's easy to take off yeah. into, the, into the tundra, whereas any small moves, and I have a little wiggle, but that's okay, because it it's yeah. just going to iron and quilt right. out and be fine, but I never got too far off. So, so you... we take that and we would do two of these, one in each one opposite in each corner, corner. Mm -hmm. never against the... Uh, into the seam of the half square triangle, Got obviously. It. But okay. so we have one of those done. And we'll take that and use my ruler to trim a quarter inch. Really, it doesn't actually matter with this because. At this point, right. But I will still just to keep all my things nice and usual, use my quarter inch sure. seam allowance there and do it on both sides. And 
open that up. And you can save these. And we can save those because those will be triangles those we can use. Those are nicely sized. Um, to make nifty little things. Mm -hmm. we'll so then you this. would press those. Do you we starch press again? press those down. I wouldn't starch again if I've already pre-starched or whatever. That'll work just fine. And now I'm going to trim two inches off of the top and bottom of the block when oriented like this. Okay. And now this is what's going to then give us the way the different sub blocks will overlap to produce that good X. Okay. Instead of without that, you would just get diamonds and diamonds. Now the way I do that is not to just, I don't like trusting myself. I do not have faith in myself. So instead of just saying, so okay. So many confessions today. So instead of just saying everything is going to have worked perfectly, because yeah. it rarely does, it works close enough, but with this, close enough often multiplies across a across a quilt to become completely right. off. Right. So I am going to find my actual center. And in doing that, what we're looking for is squaring to an edge and finding the spot where your five and a quarter inch mark. Okay. Right. Five and a quarter. Well, let's move this over this way. See, it all works easy peasy. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter inches. Okay. Right in at the three inch or the center of my six inch ruler. Okay. Now we're trimming two inches off of what is now when unfinished ten and a half inches square. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to make marks theoretically. Or in this case, just move up then a quarter inch. And trim. And then do the same on the other side. So do you, you do occasionally mark with a pen? Um, I will often use, um, I will use a pen, you know, in this case, if I'm ever marking on the top, I sure I use a water soluble. Mm -hmm. If I am able to do other things, I do like the friction pens, mm -hmm. but never on a top because you just never know how a piece of fabric yeah. or especially starched fabric yeah. will often give you a ghost line, even though I like just being able to work with a nice pen pen right. and, and be able to write a little more directly. And so I'll trim again. And here is my sub block. Okay. So then to construct the overall block, we take four of those. One, two. And it's that kind of golden. So that what we've cut off of, instead at. of the half square triangle coming straight to the edge as it would here, this space that's created here produces the center of an X mm -hmm. that now works as a mm -hmm. proper, proper X. Mm -hmm. So we would sew these together, and I would always sew these two together and these two together, so I'm never having to sew that really long string because right. wherever I can avoid stretch occurring, I actually am always a little happy with this with tiny little mismatches. It doesn't matter. The colors I choose for those off colors in the corners, I just pull randomly. Okay. Let it sometimes become two together the same, so you get a different rhythm of half of the diamond that gets formed or what some are all mm -hmm. quarter triangles and just let it be, let it play. Non-perfect pattern, as long as the sewing's good and sure, it comes together, but sure. non-perfect gets you that, a rhythm of just that play. That, I think that, of it as uh, like a spark, right. it's like a little pop to it. And it's still yeah. even just like a little reference to that sort of scrappy tradition of just mm -hmm. grab, pull, do, mm -hmm. and let it come together. So we'll sew these together and I'll just sew one and okay. carefully trying to line up where our seams come together, knowing that I can do a little trim if I need to to like get any other edges or ease, mm -hmm. some other things if they're slightly off, but getting those seams to match up as well as we can. Yeah. And I would switch to a quarter inch foot, but I don't need to here. I trust this. 
See, I go from having no faith to lots to of say. faith. It's a, <laughs> I, I, I am not a consistent human being. What's that word we used For earlier? This? Univocal versus polyvocal? Yes. That well, there are about 100,000 voices in my head that guide different parts of my quilting process. I am sure you're not alone in that respect. So I'm sewing these together and trim. I do love automatic trimmers. They are nice. Definitely nice to have. And we come together. Mm -hmm. And see, I have a little extra there, but my seams are matching, what really within, are matching pretty closely, which too. is what matters. And we would keep doing that mm -hmm. until we have our X block. Mm -hmm. And we notice we have two of the same off color here and two here because as we then put the quilt together, and we can now look over here at the quilt okay. and see how that block plays, we will see how this off color becomes one of the legs for these offset X's right. in between. It's that secondary and same pattern. here and here and here. So how do you make that happen? Well, what you want to do in, in the pattern, there are specific instructions of okay. how many of which sub block and then which sub blocks go together. You have an overall layout of what goes where um, in the design, but it's a good idea to use your design wall as you're finishing yeah. one block so you can look at next step down, what's the next order in comparing what that is to what you have in the pattern in the book and how it will then continue to yeah, come together. I would, I would want to use a, a design wall or at least a design bed. Yes, uh, <laughs> that's know, often how surface. I end up working as okay. well, depending just how, how interested the children are in my studio yeah, in any given too. week. There's that too. Um, well, let's talk about the quilt itself and the name of it and what this motif means to you. So the, the quilt is called You Are Here because I have long been obsessed with the you are here signs, especially, or the you are here mark on signs and maps of places, okay. especially parks and malls, because there I find them almost entirely useless. I'm in a state park, you're telling me I'm here, but all I see is trees, 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 trees. Okay, I am here, and that helps me how. Mm -hmm. We're in a mall, you are here, but it has the layout, and. All they have is store numbers yeah. because they never know which store is going to be where right. and what's going to go out of business. So, and then you're trying to use it in the guidance. And so the, you are here as this ubiquitous thing in American culture that purports to be the most useful thing you could have. And it never and ever what does it really is. Mean? What does it mean? Yeah. So on, I was thinking of this and playing with those and those ideas and, and sort of then taking it to a more sort of existential of where is one, all the possible here's one could be in. And that's what all of the X's are here. Mm -hmm. And why I sort of, in my mind, this was done as a meditation mat. Um, not that I can meditate. You can all probably <laughs> tell right now I could never meditate. But at least as a symbolic reference, and that's part of where the, the linen blends, um, all Essex linens, and I love working with yeah. those, but as sort of a hint at sort of, you know, we use linen as calming. Yeah, there's right. a reference yes. there, um, that naturalness of all of these X's, and I've selected out the one I want to try to remember not to be the center of the universe and push myself slightly off stage. Um, even though my brain can never do that, it never stops. Try to find little ways in my life to move off stage, even if it's just taking five minutes to walk to the local coffee shop to get a cup of coffee instead of just racing downstairs, make it and race back up. Hmm. Take those five minutes to walk um, and support my local coffee shop, which I love, <laughs> but um, take those moments and really make that not just when you have to pause, mm -hmm. take a moment and move yourself off stage. So the quilt then, this one often lives on our floor. It really is. Oh, interesting. And we'll put like, you can just put a non-slip like you would mm -hmm. for a, a, a carpet and use that. Your kids play on it. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, quilts get stained and then they get washed. Right. Um, 
they are wonderful and beautiful and important, but they're not precious objects. Awesome. They're important ones. So what is a very abstract, or it, it could look abstract, or you could find that representational X in there, right. but there's a whole lot more meaning to it than that And that's you. really, for me, it's, that's what symbolic practices are. Right. And I really do consider quilting a symbolic practice is that you're taking something literal or representative and not just doing it specifically, but finding a way to abstract it out that can speak to it without again just having that there it is and that's all that it is. And if this quilt looks familiar to people, it's because it's on the cover of your book, Modern Quilt Perspectives, um, which is a fantastic book and it really goes into detail about your design philosophy and we'll have some time to talk about that more later because we so are going to have you. We have a few more episodes with Thomas. We hope that you will come back and check it out. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Take care. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.